Buddy, what in the crap are we doing? This team that just got Donkey Kong Ping Pong Bing Bong smashed by Georgia is in the top 10? This is the one video I'm advocating for it. I want to see it in the comment section. Big pickups. Big, 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 big pickups. And it's why I tell you that Alabama losing players to the portal, it really doesn't affect them and it won't matter too much. I got some bad, 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 and I mean very bad news. And look. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but sometimes you gotta report on it. And that bad news I'm referring to and open up this video with is no other than the fact that we are officially in the off season. January 9th, 2024 is the first day of the off season and yeah, it's gonna be a long one to say the least. It was a heck of a season and in the previous video we uploaded earlier today, I told you guys how grateful I am for each and every single one of you and I'm gonna say it again here. To all the old subscribers, new subscribers, everybody part of our community, Thank you for spending yet another college football season with me. It was a blast. I had a ton of fun this year, and I know a lot of you, you just watched during the season, and that's completely fine. I understand it, but all throughout the offseason, we're still making videos every single day. So I don't want you to think, oh, well, this is the end of it. I'll see you again in seven months. No, if you still want updates on college football, you might as well stick around. I know we're not going to talk about stuff that happens on the field, but especially when it comes to news and stuff off the field, yeah, we're reporting on it nonstop. And speaking of news off the field, we got some important stuff to talk about in today's video. Already, first day of the offseason, Alabama got not one, but two huge and big-time pickups. But whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Here's the kicker with all of this. Alabama's also, at the same time, losing players left and right to the transfer portal. So what's going on at T-Town? We're going to take a look at that. And also, the new AP polls came out, and I wasn't going to speak on it because who cares? I don't care what the rankings look like. Michigan's a national championship, and if you're not first, you're last. But the reason we're going to talk about this AP poll is because it's a little bit controversial right now on Twitter. There is a certain team ranked ahead of another certain team that's got everybody talking, and I'm not going to lie, it's hypocritical. That's how I view it. So we're going to take a look at that, and also we're going to read off some of the comments on the previous video, see what some of you guys are saying about the national championship, because I'm curious. We're not going to be saying this too much longer, especially with college football winding down here, but it's going to be a jam-packed video. Strap in, buckle up, get you some popcorn, get you a snack, get whatever meal you like to eat when you watch a video, because trust me, I do the same thing. But all right, Matt, blah, 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 shut the crap up, not up for that, too. Last. All right, first things first, let's see what some of you guys were saying in the comment section right after the game. We'll read off two or three comments. Joe said, and I appreciate this comment, Joe, thank you for this. As a Michigan fan, I agree with you about the Michigan-Alabama game. The game was the only game that I felt like Michigan could have lost during the game. No other team made me feel like Michigan might lose. And if you don't know what he's referring to, he's talking about when I stated that I believe the real national championship, it wasn't last night with Washington and Michigan. It was last week with Michigan and Alabama. That was the national championship. And I said it in that video, and I'm going to say it again. I don't know how you could disagree with that statement. Yellow Blackbird 9000. What about that username? Pretty unique. I like that. Stated, imagine being Washington's backup running back and your coach putting in a guy whose knees and ankles were basically powder <laughs> instead of you. That has to feel bad. And oh my goodness, I didn't even talk about that. I should have brought that up. Great point. And that's why I love checking out some of these comments, because y'all give great perspectives. I'm so glad I'm not the only one who noticed that. Dylan Johnson, there was no reason he should have been out there. I don't care if he told the coaching staff, hey, I'm going to give it a go. After that first injury he had where he got nipped up, he was at like, what was it, 35%? He wasn't even 50% healthy. And it was to the point where he was becoming a detriment to the team because when he was in there, they were doing worse. They were doing better with the backup running back. That was crazy to me. And I know as athletes, we want to be out there and tough it out. It's a national freaking championship, but sometimes... You got to take yourself out of a game and put the team first. I love me some Dylan Johnson, but he wasn't doing his team any favors by staying in that ball game. We'll go to two more comments here real quick, and we got to get a move on. Cat Bite stated, I believe that's how you say it, because I also think that's a, I can't tell, is that a cat in the profile picture? Matt, lock in, that's besides the point, sorry. They stated, I felt kind of bad for Penix as he was limping off the field. He backed into the bus saw that is Michigan's D, and he looked like he didn't know what just hit him. The whole team did. Thanks, Matt, for an awesome season of videos. I learned a lot. Go Blue. And hey, thanks for being here. I'm just glad you enjoyed your time here. And one more comment. Let's go with one more comment here from BS. He stated, it was a great year. I subbed here in preseason. Glad I did. Thanks for the vids. Hashtag. All right, buddy. We ain't starting that. Continuing along here. And thanks to all the chat. Congrats to Michigan and Boomer Sooner 24. You know what? Now that I think about it, it's only right that we end off the year with someone commenting hashtag Matt B. Bald. It's only right, and arguably, one of the best parts of this channel wasn't the content or anything, it was the crazy hashtags all year long. And you know what, since it's the end of the season, I wanna see everybody in every comment, if you decide to write a comment, 
I want to see hashtag Matt be bald. This is the one video I'm advocating for it. I want to see it in the comment section. But going back to this comment, I'm glad you joined during preseason. I'm also glad you enjoyed your time here. One more comment though, because that didn't have anything to do with the game. Let's go with this one. But yeah, this is from a Michigan fan. I see the hashtag. WMM2016 stated, I grew up in the Rich Rod slash Hoke era when Denard Robinson, man, I remember him. That was a quarterback. Was the only thing we had. Seeing Michigan win the natty is all I've ever wanted. I'm so happy. Hashtag go blue. And hey, I'm happy for you. Heck of a year for Michigan, and I've said before, I'm going to say it again, I enjoyed Michigan fans so much this year on the channel. They were very great and respectable. Tell you this much, I'd much rather Michigan win the championship than uh, their little brother up there that goes by the name of Little Bro State, if you know you know. And I'll just throw this out there right now. I can't wait for Michigan to beat Ohio State again next year. That's going to be so funny. That's enough of the comments, and it's been a while since we've read the comments section, so I enjoyed that. But let's check out, or not check out, but let's take a look at some of the main topics we really need to get into. So the AP poll came out, and of course, you got Michigan 1, Washington 2, Texas, they're at number 3, and this is the controversial part about all this. Georgia is at number four, and Alabama is at number five. Why is this trending everywhere? Well, duh, for the obvious reason. Alabama beat Georgia, yet Georgia is ahead of Alabama. What sense does that make? Because all year long, the AP poll and everybody was telling us, oh, well, with Alabama and Texas, the head-to-head -head matters. And everybody's talking about this on Twitter, and they got a right to be upset, because how are you going to say head-to-head -head matters all year long, and then at the end, you're going to put Georgia ahead of Bama? Like, what? It makes no sense. Bama lost to the national champion in an overtime game, but yet you're putting Georgia ahead of Bama, and also Bama beat that Georgia team? Like, what are we doing? This is the stupidest thing I've seen all year long, and I'm not going to get too worked up over it because it doesn't matter. The season's over. It doesn't matter if Alabama's 2, 3, 4, 5, 25, 100. They're not in first. So as a Bama fan, don't care. But I will say it just goes to prove the hypocrisy of these idiots that vote on this crap and that's right i'm calling them idiots because you can't say head-to-head -head matters and then do this it just doesn't make any sense and also while people were tagging this to me and i was looking at it i noticed because i was like well let me look at where florida state wound up being ranked and they're tied for six with oregon buddy what in the crap are we doing this team that just got donkey kong ping pong bing bong smashed by georgia is in the top 10 and not just in the top 10 but number six overall, what are we doing, man? Florida State should not be in the top 10, period, the end. But if you really want me to break this down, I don't think they're better than Arizona, LSU, and uh, I'd say they're probably even with Penn State, but I'd also say they're not better than Notre Dame and Oklahoma. It's the fact that they're ranked ahead of Missouri that just beat Ohio State. No, Florida State's not better than Missouri. They're not better than Ole Miss. They're not better than Little Bros State. They're not better than six to seven teams that are behind them and let me also throw this in there because i've seen some people bring this up and i'm glad i thought about it before i moved on here some people were saying well oh the head-to-head -head only matters when it's an equal record remember alabama has two losses that is also flawed logic to me and it doesn't make any sense alabama beat georgia head to head and their loss let me remind you came to the national champion it's just dumb, man, and I'm going to move on before I go on a rant and tangent because it doesn't even matter. The year's over. Here's what does matter, though. In the past, I'd say two or three days, Alabama's lost a couple more players to the transfer portal, but I saw that coming from 10,000 miles away. We reported on this weeks ago when Alabama lost to Michigan. The day after, in less than 24 hours, they had 10 players in the portal at once. And like I told you guys in the video, not a big deal. No need to overreact. It happens every year at schools like Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama, and so on. Ever since the transfer portal has came into effect, Alabama's lost. I think it's like 16 to 18 players every single year. And I also stated that those 10 guys that entered the portal weren't going to be the last. In the following days, you're going to see more enter the portal, and that's what happened. I just haven't reported on the news because you shouldn't be shocked by it. It's normal. Players are going to leave. And they're especially going to leave when they're fighting for playing time and they're already not playing at Alabama. The only big time loss that Alabama has suffered in the transfer portal up until this point is most definitely Earl Little Jr. who wound up deciding to go to Florida State. I don't expect a lot of you to know Earl Little Jr. because he was a backup this year. He didn't play. But the reason he was a backup is because Alabama had a pretty dang good secondary this year. Remember, we had Kool-Aid McKinstry, first round pick, Terry on Arnold, more than likely first round pick, and also Malachi Moore. And many Bama fans thought Earl Little Jr. was going to push Malachi Moore for that starting spot this year, but it didn't wind up happening. And here's the thing. If he were to come back next year, 
unless something crazy would have happened, he was going to be a starter, but I guess that wasn't good enough for him. He decided to enter the portal, and he goes to Florida State. Wishing him the best of luck. And then Alabama also lost Malik Benson. Not really a big loss because he only had 163 receiving yards for us this year. And oh yeah, by the way, he also wound up deciding to go to Florida State. So Florida State's just taking all the Alabama players. Well, getting that out the way, and while all that was going on, it was also announced that Alabama just signed a four-star running back that goes by the name of Daniel Hill. That was huge, and we all know this. Alabama is arguably RBU running back university. They're always known for having great running backs. But also, it doesn't end there. On the same day, Alabama got a four-star cornerback that goes by the name of Zay Mincy. Big pickups. Big, 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 big pickups. And it's why I tell you that Alabama losing players to the portal, it really doesn't affect them and it won't matter too much. Think about it. They lost a couple guys to the portal and on the same days, they picked up two more four-star recruits. And I'm going to be showing you some of Daniel Hill's highlights in this video, the running back that Alabama just signed. And I'm not going to sit up here and break down his film and hype him up. You know he's a beast. If a running back commits to Alabama, you know this guy's destroying high school competition. He's going to be bigger, faster, more elusive, and stronger than everybody he plays against. And as you can see in the film right here, that is the exact case and scenario. He's playing against future DoorDash drivers and insurance salesmen. Of course, I expect him to go off and dominate. And I think Alabama fans should be very excited about this because this just goes to show and prove that Alabama isn't going anywhere anytime soon. As long as Nick Saban's there, it's going to be rainbows, butterflies, and sunshine. Now... When Nick Saban leaves, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to talk about it. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Who knows what's going to happen? That's definitely going to be an experience, and the reality is it's going to happen. Eventually, Nick Saban will not be the head coach of Alabama, but doesn't look like that's going to be anytime soon. I'm curious. Let me know your thoughts down below. But, Robin A!